So, troops, we are recording here from the G4 Claims headquarters, one of the best gaffes I've ever been in, top gaff in Wishaw. <laughs> and we have the Queen of Wishaw, the Queen of G4 Claims, the legend, Nicole. What's up? Hi. Thanks for joining us, Nicole. <laughs> Thanks so much for having Aye. me. <laughs> Feels weird, doesn't it? Like seeing the cool in the flesh, doesn't it? I know it is. Oh, I know I'm not just screen. a figure of the, your phone's imagination, <laughs> literally <laughs> coming in from the headquarters, which this is my first time in this seat, so thanks for having me. She's, she's nervous in her own gaff. <laughs> <laughs> nervous at home here, guys. <laughs> no, the place is absolutely minted. I was doing that. Another podcast a wee few weeks ago. Oh, right. Mentioned in the podcast. <laughs> uh, Total listen state though. <laughs> uh, anyway, it was it was looking amazing then. But what was that about three four weeks ago? It was yeah. And it's looking even better now. There's been literally developments like every single day because like I was just kind of explaining to you guys when I first came in there. But just trying to get parcels and mm. everything's like an absolute nightmare now. So every day something's arriving and I'm running about like a mad woman trying to make mm. sure I'm here for that arriving so I can get it in for Aye. the people who are in that day because. The podcast room has been booked like back to back. There's three kind of back to back podcasts in the day, so Oof. it's been crazy. So G4 Claims is a not at fault accident management service. Everything we do for you is totally free of charge. So what I was kind of wanting to start doing, guys, was maybe giving you as wee examples as to where I can help you, um, rather than telling you what I do every week, which people are probably getting bored with. So for example, we had someone actually phone is yesterday um basically they have been involved in an accident in a car park they've been parked in their car someone has literally drove into their car probably not realized they've hit it or just been a bit cheeky which everybody does and drove away their people have not had any details they've tried to get out the car the car that was next to them was parked really close so they were trying to like fight mm -hmm. their door open you know right. how you park dead mm -hmm. close to people sometimes you're like ah so they were in a panic trying to get the door open trying to get out the car Eventually, by the time they've got out, the car's away. Oh no! Right. No details. The damage in the back was really quite substantial. Did that Lexus out the front? <laughs> no, it wasn't. Actually. <laughs> 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 no, it wasn't. That's I fucking John's that motor. <laughs> I asked John's freebie for the day. <laughs> Com company car. <laughs> Promoted company car. That's, that's next week's story. <laughs> Don't you take my stories off of me. So basically what's happened is they've not had any details. They've been like, oh no, they've put a post on Facebook. We've seen the post. A friend of a friend has contacted us and we've contacted them. It turns out the premises in the car park they were at had facility for a CCTV mm -hmm. and we've been able to access the company's CCTV through the police and get the details so the person that's crashed into them and it was a genuine mistake the police have went to the person's door and we've got other details and now we've been able to process a non-fault accident for that person so they're not having to contact their own insurance they've not phoned them at all they've not made a claim against their own policy at any point we've provided them with a like for like replacement hire vehicle whilst their cars off the road their car is getting rep repaired and approved body shop um, and everything that we're going to do for them is fully charged through the at fault insurance company and their insurance is totally unscathed untouched all the services are free it's not a fault claims made easy <laughs> that's the best one we've done by uh, it's <laughs>
<laughs> I like that song, I'm Anderson. That's a song. fucking great song. Do you know, I'm going to be honest with you, Cam, right? I don't listen to modern music at all. But uh, I, heard Sa- I heard Salamander Street on the radio a while back, and just before he came on there, I was like, uh, I'm not sure I know much about Callum's music. And then when I read that Salamander Street, straight away, nah, mate, man, mate, it's mate, a great tune. Mate, I just put a cars on the table, it's because he's a Rangers man, you don't listen to his tunes. He listened to the other one, <laughs> <laughs> you'll never walk alone. You'll never walk alone, Callum, you cover that. <laughs> <laughs> Which your main influences, Callum? Uh, well, who are your main, main influences? <laughs> who, who are your I'm main influences? <laughs> I'm going to get stinking for this, but Rod Stewart. Aye. Oh. <laughs> yeah. He's the big self. Do you know what I mean? He's as well you know, I met Rod, Rod the Prod now. I met him once at uh, Hyde Park, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, Just randomly, he was a was lovely man. It was a concert, and I was playing like early in the afternoon, and he was headlining. And uh, I met his wife, Penny, backstage. I says, Penny, any chance I could get to meet Rod? And she was like, I just kick around. So, I kicked about and then later on that night they sort of waved me over to their, their dressing room which was the size of a field basically <laughs> and then we went in and uh, I he, he says let's get a picture for your dad because I was telling him my dad brought me up on his music and then he asked me what team I supported I said I'm a Rangers fan but at that time we were sitting in the championship or something like that and he uh, he was like, listen, we need Rangers back we need a strong Rangers so I really appreciated that so now that we are back I'm sure he feels the same <laughs> yeah, mate, he's fucking eating his words now. Eh? It's just, it, it's just another string to Rod's bow with the Celtic fans. That comment, there, that's bro. No, it's alright, it's alright, but he's done a funny draw. <laughs> no, he's funny. He's great. He's great. He's better. <laughs> no, but right, Callum. So you, you, you've got a song called Easter Road. You're from Edinburgh. You support Rangers. How did that all happen? I used to stay in Easter Road in a flat with my, with my mate. It was my first flat when I was about 17. And uh, I used to play around all the pubs in Easter Road. So there was a lot of stories there, like, you know, good and bad, a lot of great people uh, in East, Easter Road that uh, were born and brought up there. Um, there was a lot of sort of crime in the pubs and stuff as well. So there was lots to write about. And I was massively inspired by, like, train spotting and stuff as well. Um and that's how songs like Easter Road and Salamander Street came about. Mm-hmm. But um, I, I mean, I got us thinking for a bit for writing a song called Easter Road, but, you know, it's, uh, mate, <laughs> it's a know, culture song, isn't it? See, if you're getting, st- getting it stinking for writing a song, Easter Road, mate, the correct answer should always just be Helicopter Sunday. <laughs> Exactly, mate. Oh, yeah, actually, that's, hey. a, that's a fair point. Hi, Easter Road, Helicopter Sunday, you know what I mean? Uh, there you go. But that's why they want that's why. I, I seen a thing, mate, on Twitter. When was it? Oh, this must have been a few weeks ago now, mate. And you said, is anybody out for a drink or something? Aye. And, mate, that was class. And the, this woman said, I'm out for a drink. And did you meet her for a pint? Aye. I was brilliant. I love that. I mean, you know what, Cal, I work on the radio, I work at Clyde One, right? And we, we saw this story and we got the woman on the day after you'd taken her for a pint and she was like, he was like oh, she, he sat, I thought he'd just come in, have a wee drink <laughs> and be off on his way. He sat with her for a good couple of hours. She was a, a teacher from yeah. America, if I'm right in saying that. I think she was trying to get away a couple of times. I was like, nah, nah, nah. I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> yeah, did you bump her? <laughs> No, I tried to, but she said it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's brilliant, man. I just thought it was hilarious. It was brilliant. It's brilliant. So, I, mate, I thought you were kidding on, just saying it, kind of, and then when I seen the photo, and then she tweets on, like, he kept his promise or something. I met him for a pint. Uh, oh, well, I kept my promise right enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, nah, I, I actually, I do it quite often. Like, I like to just, if I'm kicking about and, like, I've got a day off or whatever, I'll just put it on Twitter and see if, any fans of that want to just go for a pint and you know That's if, magic, they, if it turns way. out a bit weird you can leave after the pint you know what I mean so <laughs> <laughs> ah, you open yourself up for, for oh. trouble when you do that though eh? I, if I'm bored one Saturday afternoon I'm going to do that man don't do that You'll get some, <laughs> somebody will steal you <laughs> <laughs> well Stevie you went for a pint Saturday and he couldn't see <laughs> that is brilliant mate it's brilliant end but, up in the Corinthian McGray though <laughs> So, Callum, obviously, like, do you find that, I don't know, like, I, a lot of people ask me, and I'm sure Toll gets it as well, like, being a supporter of one half of the old firm, do you find that it's hard, like, being a musician, being in the public eye? And uh, definitely, mate, because there's, you know, 
on a serious note, there, there's a lot of sort of politics that come with football, and I've never ever mixed those sort of two things together. No. But people automatically just assume that that you you vote a certain way or whatever. Do you know what I mean? And um, it couldn't be sort of further for the truth, really. I support the team because I love the team, and that's my my dad was was born no far from the Ibrox, and all my family are from Glasgow, so. Um, I was brought up a Rangers fan, you know, and um, I, I just love my team, but I was scared to sort of announce that I was a Rangers fan because there's no, there's no lot of musicians that do. I mean, I can Capaldi's Celtic and... Um, Q and Cry. Q and Cry. Aye, they're, mm-hmm. they are. But um, aye, there's, there's a lot of Celtic supporting sort of musicians, but I just thought, Ken, what? It's going to get asked at some point and radio stations and everything kept asking me, so I couldn't keep avoiding it. Eh? So mm-hmm. I just thought, eh, why not? Come clean, but came out. It was. It, I felt like I, I was coming out or something. Like I'd been living a life. For the, for all my life you know. <laughs> so it felt really good. Like <laughs> it's weird though, Cal. Because we I picked a good season for it, enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's weird though, because like for so many years, you know, like Bell and Sebastian, the Fratellis. Um, Mogwai, all, all these Snoop Dogg, all these, all, it was all seemed to be Celtic, but it seems to be like a flux of like all Scottish musicians now coming out. So you've got Amy McDonald, St. Phoenix, uh, St. Phoenix, uh, Biffy Clyro, I think a couple of the boys in Biffy Clyro mm-hmm. are Rangers supporters know, as well. All the, all the ones that claim to be Rangers fans are me as good as all the ones that claim to be Rangers fans. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what's, hap- <laughs> what's happening? What's happening? That's what I want to know. What's happening? Why are all these musicians suddenly coming out for Rangers? I think it's, it's it's became acceptable now to be a Rangers fan, so it's good. But I know I I can't be honest with you. I think Amy McDonald's always sort of said she was Rangers Aye, and yeah, that. She has. Um, yeah. Well, a lot of bands they kind of just they didn't want to lose fans, and some people didn't listen to music because they support a certain football team. I think that's mental. It's bonkers. I, I really do. It's a bit bonkers. I. She unless it's Charlie and the boys or something like that, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> she built a big a big music festival one time, man, just one big one big stage is all the Rangers bands and one big I stage went, all the I went, I went I went to a gig years ago, listen to this one, Callum, right? I went to see this is how long ago it was, right? I went to see Lunt Biscuit, right? <laughs> now it's they're, 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 a good Rangers man. They're right? thinking, no, their support band was called uh, Godsmack, right? Yeah, Godsmack. Yeah, 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 and they them. went like that. I've heard that in Glasgow there's two tribes. <laughs> you've got the Celts and you've got the Rangers. Now all the Celtic fans go to this side of the room. All the Rangers fans go to this side of the room. And when this song kicks in, I want to see the biggest fucking mosh pit I've ever seen. <laughs> right? I swear to God, the two of them came together like, see that scene in Braveheart when they hatchets and all that? So, Battle of the Bastards and <laughs> fucking Game of Thrones. <laughs> fucking dragons. Yeah, I'm definitely and using that. <laughs> <laughs> was it not now that on, while we're on this you're playing trans a bit Cal am I right in saying was it James Bay or who was it that went on to the main stage at Weems Bay <laughs> transmit and played simply the best and wondered no why he was getting that's right, that's right. I think it was James Bay James went Bay. out and started breaking out simply and the you best ne- you never heard from him again <laughs> No, he didn't. No, he, that's, what I that's why. I tried to tweet out on Twitter. Him up for a beer. <laughs> <laughs> and he's he's not getting a job in a job in grapes bar, man. <laughs> so he's on. He's in the Loudon. He's on, he's on the wall in the Loudon. <laughs> Unbelievable. Hey, Cal, I'm obviously a big Rangers fan. Growing up, who was your heroes at Rangers? Mate, Ali McCoy. Like, I I just love the guy. I met him when I was a wee boy and got my photo taken with him. He was at Kilmarnock at the time. Um, but even now, man, he's just an all-round brilliant guy as well. Great character, very funny, entertaining, mm-hmm. and and a and a great great footballer. So, um, anytime there's like chats like with your mates at the pub, and they're like, "Come on, all-time greatest footballers," and they're all saying Perry and all that, I always just chop in Ali McCoy. definitely. I just Aye. love him, man. Aye, um, you can't, you can't. <sighs> I'd, I'd even say for a Celtic side, man, you can't help but like the guy, can no, you? Yeah, we're saying fucking different last week, you prick. No, <laughs> that, was, that was Andy Gorham. Wasn't he McCoy? Was Andy Gorham? Ah, you got that story wrong, actually. It was Andy Gorham. Oh, sorry, Cal, that's us nearly arguing again, mate. Sorry. I want to know what it was, mate. Oh, we that we 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 that we done it out last week and it all went Pete Tong because Tong started getting aggressive. No, 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 no,
I stormed out the Corinthian, never to be seen again, man. <laughs> Grado oh, chasing him down the road. Like, you man, my prick! Grado was chasing me down fucking Ingram Street, calling, you're a wanker! <laughs> <laughs> they made to have a, a week after, me and just play the best bits. No, but I'm saying, like, if you're a Celtic fan, I think it's hard to know, like, McCoy. Obviously, back in the day when he was banging him in against Drew's left, right, and centre. I've but... always liked uh, like, McCoy. Like, we had a question, we, we do a part on the show each week called The Big Question. And a couple of weeks ago, the question was, who for the other side? Have you, do you like kind of thing? Not obviously, uh, the best pals or anything, but I think if you ask any Celtic fan, their answer would probably be McCoist. Aye, definitely. Aye, man. definitely. Just, he, he's infectious. You can't hate him, you know what I mean? Aye, uh, I'm just trying to think of a Celtic fan. Hey, well, I'm going to make a shag and he done. <laughs> <laughs> for a Celtic side, I always think, after, not always think, someday that we had on the show, I thought John Hartson was just a lovely guy. Aye. Mm. Lovely, lovely guy. He's a, I mean? good, he's a good pundit as well. Aye, definitely. What's your favourite Rangers moment, Callum? To be honest, it has to be this season, mate, just because of the last few years. Um, obviously, it was, was pretty rotten, like. <laughs> Aye, it was, it was grim. And uh, every time I looked at Facebook, mate, it was just, I had to stop looking at it because it hurt. Aye. No, it was brutal, mate. It was, uh, brutal. It was, so, it was a tough time. I I think during about Christmas time probably this year when you when it was kind of obvious that we'd won it then, mm-hmm. um, and stuck ten in a row. So, aye, I love it, man. Aye, it was the the kind of New Year's game, wasn't it? Just after Christmas, just before New Year, and we played Celtic at Ibrox. So it was just after New Year, and we won one 0 mm-hmm. and we didn't even have a shot on target. Was like, Mate, uh, we didn't even play well against nah, Celtic, like nah. the first two games or whatever it was, mm-hmm. or or, the, or three of them. But that's that's a winning team. It's like you just grind out a result, eh? And, aye. Definitely. Um, what do you think of this season, mate? How do you think it's shaping up? I, I think Rangers will, will walk it if they, they didn't get too cocky. and we, we need to win our old firm games, in the first two anyway, and then it's all over. Because I've looked at Celtic's team and they've just not signed enough players, like um, or the right players yet. They look mm. really weak at the back. and um, Even up front, I think, I think Griffiths has passed it personally myself. I think he's had his, his best days. A lot of people would disagree with me. I can he's got moments of genius now and again, but it's going to take more than Griffiths to win the league. And uh, I know Edward's not playing that great either. Yeah, so right. Aye, yeah. I just... Um, Mate, but you, you let like a fly it. on the wall in here earlier. Did you, cause that's just basically everything Chris Toll said at the start of this show, but you said there really, wasn't it, man? That's bang on. Absolutely. Bang on, man, it is. Spot on. But I just, I mean, Aye. if, like you said, Cam, I think it's kind of, it's, it's ours to throw away. We ah, can, exactly. Man. I think if... One of the main things that can beat us and fuck this season up for us is us. You never know, man. Some aye, team might have a fucking Leicester. Aye, you never know. I know. You never know. I doubt you it. You never know, aye. Aye. I mean, Hopefully it's I'm, I'm sure they'll make an after. <laughs> <laughs> Celtic, they are Leicester. <laughs> <laughs> no, I hope uh, I hope it's competitive at least, mate, because it's... Um, aye, I, yeah. I, I want to see Scottish football do well, mate. You need strong teams, eh? Aye. Absolutely. I was kind of hoping Aberdeen might sign a couple of decent players, but they signed Scott Brown, so I thought, well, that'll be that. <laughs> That's it, they only, they only need the one. That's the same treble. <laughs> uh, is there any, where do you think Rangers need to strengthen, if, if anywhere? Where do you think they need to strengthen, John? Uh, good question, mate. Good question. Um, whew, I'd quite like to see another sort of attacking midfielder, a creative, a Ryan Kent at the other side. Mm-hmm. Um. I think Hadji's decent, but I, I think he kind of gets away with it, having decent players around him personally. Um, he's not going to win you leagues anyway, I don't think. He shows up every so often, doesn't he? He's one of I was I talking about player. Joey Veerman or something coming, aye, but, aye. but I, I, I think that's off the cards now, I don't know. It is a kind of, I mean, I think at the back we're quite sorted. Two players for every position at the back. Midfield seems pretty set. That is kind of the final third, I think. A lot of onus is on Kent if Morelos isn't there. It's on Kent. Exactly. What, do you, what do you think the script is with that Morelos? I think, I'll tell you this now. I think he's getting a bit of leeway here. And he, he shouldn't be because it's, to me, I'm maybe being a paranoid Celtic supporter as fucking usual. But see if it was a Celtic player that never turned back up after after uh, pre season, mm-hmm. it would be, oh, he's down tools and all that. But apparently, he's uh. just away doing charity work. I think, uh, do, do you know what you're getting paid for, Fredo? 
He's doing charity work. Brilliant. I, no, that's what it is. Ah, he's, 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 I'm going to use that. If I didn't turn up to a gig because I'm long over, I'm away doing charity work. <laughs> uh, the car tailor packed these bags for him. <laughs> I don't know. I think the him not being there for such a long period of time now, when obviously like Barris, each Camara, Hander, they all kind of were it. And the, the, he Euros. was he was out of the uh, yeah, South America. I know. So I don't know what's going on. I think. Have we lost? Callum's had enough. No, he's back. No, I, thought you'd, I thought you'd had enough. I thought you were away to do some charity. Oh, work I, was, I was. I was checking my battery. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think, I don't know, it's a, it's a tricky one, I think it could be the, it might be off, but I think we need to strengthen up front, but we'll, time will tell. Speaking Aye. of gigs, Callum, when are you gigging next, when can we see you, are you got a gig coming up soon? Uh, I, to be honest with you, the, my like headline shows, are, they're all sold out at the minute, oh. apart from, I think, one in Strathpetha uh, in October, <clears throat> but I'm going on tour with Amy McDonald, uh, so we're doing the Hydro. <laughs> Where's the first where's the first stop in the tours at the Loudon Tavern? The... <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Miss Amy McDonald. Hello! Hello! <laughs> <laughs> then Callum comes on my step up and play. <laughs> Probably. That's it. Wait, so the, that's when is that, mate? Tell us when it is, because I'm coming. Uh, soon. That's in October, and then uh, so the England dates are in October. The hydros in December. So I uh, get your tickets. Come along. It'll be good. It'll be good. Uh, a good you night. Aye. Toll you gone. Fuck it. Fuck it, man. I don't care. Toll's there. Toll's there, mate. Toll's <laughs> there. I'll play Sweet Caroline. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. That's a good one. What, what about that other one, that Mental Is Anything? Play that song as well, mate, if I'm there that night. <laughs> right. Play that, and yeah, you'll never walk alone, one not you, then? It's called Don't Walk Alone. I know, I know. I'm only winding you up, man. I'm only winding you up. <laughs> right, Callum, here's a question for you, right? Headlining Transmit or Rangers winning the Champions League? Doesn't it matter, neither of them are happening. Oh! <laughs> uh, oh, that's a, that's a, that's a Syrian. Uh, <laughs> right, let's, right, right, I know you're playing transmit, right, but let's swap that one. The okay, what? The I'm going to, I think I'll headline, hit team the fact, I think I'll, I'll, this is not me being, uh, sort of, fooling myself or anything, but I've got belief that, I'll, I'll headline it one day anyway, so I'll take Rangers for the Champs League. That's a great answer for you. That's a, fucking, for you. That's a good but answer, I'll tell you man. what, um, knowing, knowing your luck, it would be Rangers would get to the Champions League final and you'd be headlining on the Saturday night and you wouldn't be able to watch it. Did you miss it, man? <laughs> and then and there's a big announcement to transmit. Hey, I'm very sorry, but Callum Beatty's away doing some charity work tonight. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Sitting in the grapes bar, man. <laughs> talk, to, talk to your man yeah, on the wall. <laughs> With my top off. <laughs> Brilliant, Callum. Uh, mate, this is a part of the show, right? Every week on Football Daft, we put our guests' Scottish football knowledge to the test with a 90-second quiz. Oh, mate. Let's, let's do it. Right, uh, we've got a wee leaderboard, mate. David Martindale, the living manager, is top of that with a score of 16. In joint second, it's John Sutton, Chick Young and Hamilton Scott Martin all on 15. Mark Wilson and Keith Lasley are third with 14. Other selected scores include Charlie Adam on 10, Bob Malcolm on 6, and the world's strongest man, Tom Stoltman, and Barry from EastEnders on 4. At the bottom, it's a tie between Peter Love and Chris Barry Derrick from EastEnders. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> says that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, we've got Peter Lovenkranz, Derek Johnson, Craig Levine, Rab Florence, and Mixu Patalainen all on three. Is there anybody there you'd want to beat? Uh, well, no, really, I quite Chris Sutton, but I don't think it's going to happen. It's all right, it was John Sutton. Oh, it was John Sutton, mate, it was John Sutton. Oh, John Sutton? Aye, aye. Oh, he's all right. Nah, he was all right. <laughs> he was all right. But, Can I do the questions? Uh, I just, I just didn't want to come last, mate. That's all I feel about. <laughs> Right, you ready for this then? I, I think there's a slight delay here, by the way. 
Hold on, have you made up the questions? Because you're a Celtic man. No, no, Johnny. You've rigged it already. I wrote them, I wrote them. Don't worry, he's a Celtic fan and all. Right. Uh, your 90 seconds start now. Leanne Dempster now works at which club? Uh, oh, sh- <laughs> she left Hibs. St Johnston. The Spiders are the nickname of which side? Nickname of what? Which side? Uh, St Murren. Uh, no, no, uh, Air, Air United. Raphael Varane has just signed for which English club? Raphael. Varane. Varan. Pass. Who is Rangers record signing? Record signing? Uh, Flo. Who was Celtic manager when they stopped 10 in a row? Uh, Neil Lennon. Who plays at Station Park? Station Park. Uh, pass. Who scored England's only goal in the Euro final? In the Euro final, uh, who was that again? Sacco, something like that. Saka. Fergus the Fox is the club. Is which club's mascot? <laughs> Fergus the Fox. <laughs> uh, that will be Kilmarnock. What number did Salamander Street peak at in the Scottish chart? One. <laughs> Peter Grant is the manager of which Championship side? Peter Grant, um, Inverness, Cali. Which Scottish team have adopted Time. the song? Which, which Scottish team have adopted the song Paper Roses? Paper Roses. <laughs> Hamilton. <laughs> Do you know something? Do you know what? Before we started this, mate. Cali still in the championship. They get promoted. No, the, Inverness, Cali are still in the championship. The thing is, there's a, there's a wee bit of a rule breach here because, because Stephen forgot to tell you that you're not allowed to pass, you've got to give an answer. I, I don't think it would have mattered. I don't <laughs> think it would have Right, Callum, we'll go through your wrong answers, all right? Right. Leanne Dempster works at Queen's Park. The Spiders are the nickname of Queen's Park. <laughs> Raphael <laughs> Varane just signed for Man United. How's that a Scottish quiz? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he's got a point. He's got, got a point. He's got, he's got a, a point. point. There so we go. We'll get you a point. I don't think your Scottish knowledge is much good anyway. <laughs> Calm, here we go. Celtic Manager <laughs> stopped 10 in a row was Vim Janssen. Station Park is the home to Forfa. England's only goal was in the Euro final was scored by Luke Shaw. Fergus the Fox is uh, Falkirk's club mascot. Salamander Street peaked at number six in the Scottish charts <laughs> of in Wikipedia. Who was number one? <laughs> is that what your manager told you? <laughs> <laughs> Now's a good time to go and do some charity work. <laughs> <laughs> Peter Grant is the manager of Dunfermline. Uh, the Scottish team that adopted Paper Roses as Kilmarnock. <laughs> Man, <that is laughs> a, a, you're such a lovely guy. Bottom, I know. Such a lovely guy. That is a shocker. It's, <laughs> a, it's a one, Callum. It's a one. You're bottom of the board. Listen. Um, I think we're going to have to stop this interview. <laughs> Listen, let them out, right? We'll try and organise if you've got free time at some point but, in the future. We had another guy that was on, and we like, only get one. Aye. Yeah, so that's right. Have, we should have a competition between the two. Oh. I'm going to be cracking on at the wine a bit earlier. Right. <laughs> <laughs> mate, Superb. Brilliant, mate, but honestly, we'll get you back home. We'll try and rectify that and make you get more than one. But thank you for coming nice on, Nice one, Thanks nice very one. much, Callum. 55. Yay! <laughs> Fuck it, he got four. He got four. <laughs> there you go. He 55. <laughs> All the best, mate. Cheers. Cheers, lads. Take it Cheers, easy. Yeah, mate. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.